Ladies and gents out in YouTube land, hope everyone is having a great day. Uh, my name is Mason George. If you happen to be new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe while you're here. Today's video is kind of a, a little fun one. I uh, got out all my personal collection of dirt bikes here, and I figured I'd make a little video and uh, show you guys my little personal hoard. And, you know, a lot of people are into the super restored bikes, and I think that it's awesome. I appreciate it. And if you'd like to have a bike restored, that is something that we do at the shop. Um, and it's fun, and it's expensive, and yeah, we like that. But personally, I'm a big fan um, of hunting these old dirt bikes out of barns and finding them um, in whatever condition, in original condition. And uh, that has kind of become my personal collection and you might think, well, that's kind of crazy. Well, if you do, uh, in the Harley world, it's not. Um, in fact, in the last like few years, if you follow Harley stuff, there's a, a really great channel, Hunting Harleys. He got into uh, collecting original paint knuckleheads. And it turns out, after years, right now, the original paint untouched stuff is worth more than these crazy restorations um, because yeah, you can't duplicate that. So I've kind of gotten into that with dirt bikes a little bit and you know, I'm sure it's never gonna be to the $200,000 crazy Harley price stuff, but it, you know, it's a weird little niche market and so far it seems to be uh, paying off pretty good. But um, these bikes here are bikes that are in my personal collection as in, they're not up for sale or anything like that. Uh, just stuff that is kind of near and dear to my heart and uh, stuff that I like. So I keep it uh, when I find it. So yeah, let's take a little walk through time. We're going to go multiple decades here of dirt bikes and check them out. And I want you guys to pay attention to things like suspension and the exhaust because the earliest bike is a 62 and the newest bike is a 1983. And in that short amount of time, they changed a lot. So, like I was saying, the first bike in the lineup here is actually my favorite bike. Um, this thing will never be for sale. It uh, has a lot of sentimentals to me. If you guys have been following my channel for a really long time, we had a really good friend, Jack Shields. He worked for Hap Jones. He was like, actually he was 90 years old when he passed. Um, really good friend of mine. Well, he raced one of these bikes when they were new uh, after he got back from the war, which they were semi-new at that point. But yeah, um, he was big into these. So this bike right here, I love it. It's a 1962 Greaves motocross scrambler now one thing i will tell you for sure is this pipe right there is uh aftermarket oh yeah don't mind my notes here i just didn't want to forget anything but yeah this pipe is called a mayfield and i want to say it was four or five british pounds back in the 60s um, i actually have the advertisement for it somewhere um but yeah Mayfield pipe. Now, this is the oldest bike. So, like I was saying, if you look at the exhaust, this is a two stroke. It is a 250cc bike. Um, these Greaves are actually a British motorcycle. So, they were made from 1951 to 1977. And the earlier ones are definitely the cooler ones. Mine is missing the air box, so I gotta get an air box for it. Um, but I love the condition of this thing. Originally, this bike would have been blue. And if you look real close on the forks where the scratches are, you can see the original blue paint underneath it. Somebody painted this at some point and I don't know. I don't want to restore this bike. I just think it's super cool the way it is. Um, if anything, I will get it running. 
Um, right now it doesn't run, obviously, but I don't know. I don't want to restore it. I just want to ride it the way it is. It's just too darn cool. And another thing that I want to bring up on the Greaves is the front end. This is the only bike in my lineup that has one like this, but it's called a leading link front end, and it's super cool, and it works pretty good in theory slash on um, BMW uses a similar design, um, and for downhill braking, it's awesome. I like them just because they look really cool. Moving on and getting a little bit newer, we have the 1966 Bull Taco Manador. So this bike is a 250cc bike. You know, it was kind of a standard dirt bike at the time. Um, originally it had lights and all that good stuff. And I actually have the original parts. They're all in a box. This was a kind of a one owner bike. Apparently it was bought brand new in San Jose. I do have the original metal fender for it. It's got a Preston Petty on it now. But um, yeah, it was kind of kind of passed down through the family and stopped running at some point and got semi disassembled. So I acquired it um, and kind of, not, you know, I didn't plan on buying it, but we'll see what happens. I have a friend of mine who you might see in future videos who has a super awesome collection and he does not have one of these. So I think this would go great in his museum, um, which he has a full on museum. It's crazy. And uh, he has some bikes that I think that I would like. So we might end up doing a barter thing on that. Like I said, these bikes aren't for sale, but this one is I have the least attachment to. I do like Bull Tacos a lot, uh, but I'm a big Persang fan. And this is Manador. Still a really cool bike. And I, the only reason that I'm considering it is because it's a friend and it would be going into a museum. You'll see that on future videos. Moving on and getting a little bit newer in age and a little bit more high tech, we have... My second favorite bike, I would say, uh, which is the 1972 Petten Jack Piner 175. Um, I am obsessed with Pentons uh, for many reasons. Huge John Penton fan. I'm from Ohio. Whole lot of history there. He did a whole lot of cool stuff for the whole motorcycle industry. And yeah, I love Pentons. So this thing is definitely not going anywhere. Um, I would like to rebuild the engine. Um, I don't know cosmetics, what we're going to do on that front. Uh, this bike should have aluminum fenders. Um, they're kind of rare. So I've been looking, haven't found any yet, but we have all the time in the world. So eventually we'll find the correct fenders. Also headlight, speedo, that kind of thing. Um, it needs some love. But man, for its age, it is in really good condition. And as we travel on down the line, you can see the suspension's getting taller. Don't mind that pizza pie uh, sprocket on there. That is goofy. And I don't know if anyone actually ever ran that. I have the, the regular sprocket for it. But yeah, you can see the travel in the front end. Bigger, bigger, bigger. And... Now we come along to the 1976 Husqvarna 360 WR Cross Country. So Husqvarna's are really cool motorcycles. I like them a lot. Um, starting with, you know, Steve McQueen rode one. So come on, what do you want? King of cool. Uh, this thing, 360, factory purple, although the, most of the paint is gone. But uh, everything is there. This bike is in really good shape for its age. And I haven't tried to start it yet. I have a feeling, though, that this thing is going to run. All the, all, the, all the signs are there pointing to it running. So we just have to make a little time and uh, give it a few kicks. But I think this thing is going to run. Really stoked on it. Um, it should have... 
yellow fenders. So got to hunt those down. I have a set of Preston Petties, I do believe. They might work on there, not sure. But Husqvarna's are really awesome motorcycles. And a lot of people don't know, but Husqvarna has been around just as long as Harley. Not as successful, but uh, they did start in like 1903. Um, KTM owns them now, uh, which is interesting because this bike right here, the Penton, Pentons were before KTMs, and then they became KTMs, as in KTM bought out John Penton. Um, this bike is a Penton on the tank, and then KTM on the engine. So they did this for like a couple years before KTM fully took them over. But yeah, now, coincidentally, they own Husqvarna. Pretty neat stuff. Husqvarna's. You'll be seeing more Husqvarna's in future videos, that's for sure. So, we move along to the newest bike in the lineup, and that is the 1983 Mako Alpha 1. And this bike is, uh, well, it's a 490, and it's a freaking beast. <laughs> um, they had one major Achilles heel, apparently, and that was... The rear suspension well this is a fox setup on this one but supposedly from uh the factory issued a recall and they would give you an olens um so that's kind of that's kind of neat uh i don't know if the silencers oem or not I, I i really doubt it um looks like a a fox part but bike isn't in that bad a shape for being a motocross bike it looks like it was ridden for a couple years and then uh and then parked and that's kind of the story that i got with this one i was just really excited because this this is the first mako that i've ever even had the chance of buying well for outside of auctions and all that good stuff but organically this is the first one that i've had the chance to buy so i jumped on it and it's also very borderline as far as being like a vintage motocross bike. It does have drum brakes, front and rear, and it is air-cooled. So it's got that going on it. But uh, the Monoshock, the Monoshock kind of kills it for me as far as the look. I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of the Twin Shock bikes. I think that the Twin Shock bikes just look... A little cooler, but yeah, the Mako is, uh, she's a beast. This bike, I don't know the seat height on it, but man, you got to be at least six foot to, to touch the ground on that bad boy. So I guess we'll, uh, we'll go in reverse order here. Hope you like the tour. We got the 83 Mako 490, the, uh, 1976 Husqvarna. 360 cross country wr wide ratio oh yeah big time and the penton i don't think i mentioned uh so pentons were made from 1968 to about 1978 by 1978 they were pretty much just ktms but uh they're really cool motorcycles and any chance i get to buy penton stuff i jump on it the 1966 manador the Spanish uh, Spanish specialty we have today, and our English friend, the 1962 Greaves. As always, thanks for tuning in. Like I said before, if you happen to be new, please subscribe. It uh, helps out the program a lot, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.